Another way we can kind of locate uh, a data value within the larger data set is with this calculation we've, we've seen before, right? It's something called a z-score. You remember from our previous discussion, a z-score is a measure of how many standard deviations a data value is from the mean. And you can kind of see that in the calculation here. The way we calculate a z-score is we take um, x, which is our individual data value, and we subtract the mean from it. So what that gives us, right, x minus x bar, that's the distance from the data value over to the mean in either direction. And then to get the z-score, we divide that by the standard deviation. And that kind of converts that distance into a number of standard deviations. All right, so let's uh, take a look here, right? Do a couple of examples real quick. Uh, I have this data set and I've already calculated the mean and the standard deviation down there at the bottom. And I want to calculate the z-score for 0 0.66, right? So that's my x value and I've got x bar and I've got s. So really all I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop these numbers into the formula. This becomes 0.66 minus 0.717 divided by 0.154 and you go to your calculator you get that this is negative 0 0.370 and as you, you hopefully you're, you're you're seeing here you have to be careful about this formula because it's got subtraction in it so you have to be sure that you're getting that x and x bar in the right order right and, and the way the way i i kind of remember this if the data value is greater than the mean, I expect to get a positive z-score. And if the data value is less than the mean, right, numbers to the left, less than, we associate them with being negative. So for values less than the mean, I expect to get a negative z-score. And that's always a quick check that I do in my head, right, when I'm doing these calculations. Right, when I, when I get to my final answer, I always say to myself, okay, the data value was above the mean, Yes, my value is positive. I did the subtraction right. So here, uh, I want to go the other way, right? Again, I know uh, the mean and the standard deviation, and I want to find a data value that is two standard deviations above the mean. So again, if, if you kind of try to visualize this, right? I've got my mean here. And there's one standard deviation up. There's another standard deviation up. I want to know where that point is, right? How far do I have to go from the mean to get two standard deviations away? And remember, this two standard deviations above the mean, that is the z-score. So all I have to do to get this, I'm going to go to my formula. I'm going to put two in here for the z-score. I'm trying to find the data value. Uh, I know my mean is 0.717 and my standard deviation is 0.154. Now, all I have to do, solve this for x. Right, I'm going to multiply both sides by 0.154. And I'm actually going to hold off on doing the arithmetic for just a second. Then I'll add 0.717 to both sides. 0.717. You see what I ended up doing here. Right? I ended up doing exactly what I described. I took two times the standard deviation and I added that to the mean. If you do that, you end up with 1.025. I know so you, some of you, you may think, well, why didn't you just do that? Why didn't you just double the mean, double the standard deviation and add it to the mean? Well, I want you to think in terms of doing this with the formula because we're going to be doing this uh, when we start talking about applications of normal distributions, for example, we're, we're going to need to find data values like we just did here, and we're going to be doing it with numbers that are not always as nice as 2. All right, so I, I want you to, to understand, right? Yes, sometimes there's a quick and easy way to do it. Sometimes uh, we really are going to need to go to the formula and solve it to get the values that we need. Okay, so... Uh, this is the end 
of our discussion of um, measure, different ways of measuring, different ways of numerically summarizing what we're seeing in a data set. We do, we do have a couple more things to talk about in this section, though. One thing we're going to talk about, uh, this is what we're going to do in the next section, is outliers. Right? We, how, I mean, we've talked about what an outlier is. An outlier is a data value that is significantly separated from kind of the main body of the data. And that's really vague <laughs> in math terms. What do we mean by significantly separated? Well, in the next lecture, we're going to look at two different ways uh, to actually quantify this and to, to determine numerically whether or not a data value is, is, in a sense, kind of out of bounds.